All right, guys, welcome to our new boat. Finally. Finally, here we go. How many questions have we been asked? Oh, so many, so many. <laughs> so many drive-bys to see the new boat. Here we go. Quick story on why we sold the old boat, okay? We were building a boat. Obviously, that didn't go ahead. We had sold our old boat already, but it hadn't been picked up yet. And we were going through a fat sale no matter what and we had to find a boat. So we were contemplating maybe just having a tinny for a while or whatever, and then this popped up. Yeah, it's funny though, because I saw it and I thought, oh, that's really nice. And then, you know, when those things just continue to pop up and there's a reason for it, and yeah, yeah. then you saw it. And... I seen it and I sent it to Sez. So what yeah. caught my attention is like, I love compasses. I got a little collection of old compasses and I seen the compass on the side. Um, and that's sort of what caught my attention yeah. and yours. I guess because Axman had that too, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, my boat, a couple of boats ago, you've seen it a few times, I put a compass on that. I just love them. So that's what caught our attention anyway. And I started talking to the guy who built it. And um, his name's Brad. Now, um, Brad is from Han Marine. This boat here is a 6.8 metre MMD. Now, that's a McDonald Marine design. Now, Andrew McDonald Smith is one of the best architects in Australia, I'd say, for uh, creating custom plate boats. He's created most of the big name boats like Riptide, Svensson, Performance, the, all those boats he's drawn up. This is one of his personal designs and there's not many out there. It's, it's similar to a Rebel and they're a very good boat. So anyway, I got talking to Brad. Brad built the boat. I went out, we had a look and um, I sort of just fell in love with it straight away. Eh? Yeah. Like yeah. he's done an amazing job and I'm gonna run through it all with you. His attention to detail has been awesome. The effort that he's gone to in <laughs> everything is just, you know, he built it from start to finish. I've seen photos of the understructure and it is bulletproof, like the transom. I'll, I'll put photos and I'll show you, but it is, it's built like a brick shit house, basically. It's a heavy boat, it's a quiet riding boat. I took it for a test drive with Brad inside the bar and I don't turn around too much in the bar, mm. but I turned around. Brad, if you're watching this, mate, I seen your white knuckles hanging onto the thing. He wasn't keen on me going through, it was horrendous. But so I turned around, we had a play inside the bar and I tell you what, it went really well in a following sea, in a head on sea, side on, like everything, it ran really nicely. And um, from then on, me and Brad uh, discussed figures. We come to an amount we were both happy with and mate, we bought the boat and that's it. Went up, picked it up um, and then come around, surprise says and the kids. <laughs> but um, they're all waiting out on the road and we've been for a couple of um, small family trips out in it. Now, there's things we're not gonna be able to do in this that we could do in the other boat. There's things we couldn't, can't do in the other boat that we can do in this. Sleeping is gonna be a lot easier. Uh, creek work's not gonna be as easy. So, you know, down the track, we might look at getting a tinny, but we've got some pretty cool ideas of stuff we're gonna do pretty soon. I'll probably do a couple of solo missions in it and sleeping when it says it work. <laughs> Just makes things a lot easier. So um, that's, that's one of the reasons anyway. I'm gonna run through a couple of mods now that we've done uh, since we bought it. One is new motor, lighting, power, anchor, a few a few cool little mods and show you, you missed, uh, how you it- one major one though. What? Fitting it in the carport. Fitting it in the carport. Gavin, Miggy, thank you very much. Fitting it in the carport. But anyhow, I'll run through these mods that I did. We'll come back at the end. I'll show you all through it. I'll explain the dead rise, the transducers, the electrics, the fuel, everything. I'll show you what an amazing job Brad's done. And then uh, hopefully you'll love it as much as we do. All right, one thing we want you to do is help us come up with a name for it. The one that the one name that's that you can't come up with is Outer Line. Obviously that, that might be the obvious choice, but if you can come up with a name that we actually end up calling the boat, we'll send you out a full merch pack, all right? <laughs> I promise you, if you come up with a wicked name, we can't say no to it, yeah, we'll send you on. one out. <laughs> All right, put a little bit of a list together now of some boat mods that I'm keen to do. Um, so, so number one is some uh, under gunnel lights. All right, so I've been to and throwing what to put underneath the gunnels for a nice light. You don't want it too bright. You don't want it bright enough. You want a couple of colours. You know, a, a red is really good for night time, but then when you're fishing, you want something bright enough. So, what I thought is I'll go the same ones as I've got on the canopy on my car, and that's these. The steady rock lights all right so what they do they're an rgb rock light you get six of them in a pack 
I paid $199 just then, I got it from Repco. What they do is they're pretty easy to hook up and you can control them by a switch up the front that I'll put and by my phone. So I can change it to any color, purple, blue, red, yellow, green, whatever. You can dim them, you can make them not so dim, you can you can desaturate the light, you can, so it's gonna be, they're gonna be really good. And I'm gonna put them up under the gunnel on the side and I've got this 30 degree offset. So what that's gonna do is standard, they come with a flat backing and a bracket that's flat. But this one will sit like this and it'll point the light down onto the ground, which is what I want. I don't want any light up here. What I've got to go up here, I took the rocket launchers off to get uh, the boat back as far as I could. But what I'm gonna put up here uh, onto the rocket launchers is the steady floodlight. Okay, they're good quality. This one's marine. Um, so, hang on. Black, white, and yellow. Anyway, this one's white and uh, it will throw off. It's a floodlight, so it floods out like that and it's about 25 watts so hopefully it's not like super bright i don't want anything that sprays all the way over into the water because i like it to just fill the cabin with light not spray over into the water and the fish see it from above from below or whatever so anyway i don't know if that makes a difference but anyway we're going to go through this and uh show you how i do it and then this is me bait board all right um and under here this comes out like this all right so you can see under there water gets under there bait juice gets under there and everything when you're driving i think that would fall out so what i've done is i've got some double-sided tape velcro that i'm going to put one side underneath the bait board in four or five spots and the rest i'm going to put on the actual bait board and that'll velcro down and i can just peel it up i then got a nice little bit of soft strip that i'm going to put as a secondary thing on the seal in here okay so it's already got one but i'm going to put another one and that seals real, that'll seal really nicely. All right, so Brad, the guy who built the boat, has done a really good job in here. He's put it on some starboard, you see? All right, and then he's got everything to that, so nothing is earthed to the hull, and that's exactly how you want it. Um, it's all very nice and neat job. And everything goes up the pillar, and that's how we get power to all the stuff in the dash and up in the roof. We've got the NMEA, we've got the electric um, anchor here, um, and then we've got a spare cable that goes up there and that's going to make it nice and easy for me to run uh, the floodlight to the back. So I'm toing and froing which way to do this. Um, if I run the power from the battery all the way up to the front and just run the lights from the transom up around and into the gunnels that way. Or if I keep it all in here and I've got to run it up along all this down that side and through to the back. So let's have a look. Oh, right. well, here's everything you get in the park. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got one of the other lights up here. Six. And I believe two of those cables are five meters and one, two, and four of them are three and a half. You've got all the flat plates there, which I won't be using. And you've got the power harness here, which is what I want to look at right now. They are waterproof. So they're all rated for this. Let's see, no one needs instructions. Right, so we've got the module box. That goes to six little leads, which the lights plug directly into, and then they run. So that's nice, that's all done for you. All right, I've decided to uh, do it all down the back, run it through the rear um, transom gunnels, and then run one single power lead up to the front because I think it'll be quicker and I'm struggling for length in the wires and the lights to get down to the back. But already, I just had to go to the shop, as you always do, because I haven't got everything. And I'm trying, they didn't have three core wire. I would have to drive like half an hour away to get that. So I thought I'll just grab a separate red, black, and blue wire. I'll make my own extension wire. I'll put it in this sheath, in the split um, core tubing. So it's all done properly. And mate, this is the biggest pain in the ass job. I've got seven meters to go. That's taken me about 15 minutes. I watched a few YouTube videos on how to do it quickly and easy, but I bought split tubing that only just fits around three wires, didn't I? Anyway, I'll come back to you in two hours. Rightio, so quite a while later, I've uh, sheathed all that, uh, those three wires. So we've got the blue, red, and black in there. What Brad, the boat builder done here, I like this, he's got some aluminium graded panel 
and he's got it up along there. It's just easy to zip tie everything all the way along. So I uh, like that idea. He's done an awesome job there. It's also given me somewhere to put my rock light onto. So I've screwed it up to there. It's a bit of a nightmare, but I'm going to put three along there. And then I'll run my wire behind here and I'll zippy it all the way down there and behind into the back and run over the batteries. And I've got my plug neatly down there. So I'm getting progress. Right, a little update on where I'm at. Um, uh, I've got all my wires pulled along this gunnel. Lights are sitting there down the bottom for now. So I've got to, you can screw one in, but I've got to sick of the other two up here. Got it running down underneath here. So that's M3. I've got screwed up into this uh, aluminium slotted uh, sort of whatever that stuff is. The flat ang the, the flat aluminium stuff. <laughs> another one there and another one up there. Then I've got my red, blue and black wire in through here and I won't lie, that part was by far the hardest and <laughs> it was all my fault. Three wires in it and they only just fit. So if you are going to get wires and put it through the corrugated split tubing, double the size of the corrugated split tubing you're going to use because it'll make it a lot quicker for you. They literally just connect into the end of this, like these three I've already done on the um, port on the starboard side there. So I've got the port side to go. They're going to connect into these and I'm going to tidy them all up. I'm going to run the power into these two bus bars and then we've ran it all the way up here, through there, out through here and this is my switch. But unfortunately I haven't got a spare switch here so I and also there's three wires and then only two, only one that would clip on here and the negative goes to the bus bar. So I'm not 100% what the blue wire is there for. If it's like a constant power or what, I, I don't know. But I'm sure you guys will tell me I am not a electrician or an auto sparky. I like to try things and figure it out myself. So anyway, let's get this wired up. This fits good. It's like literally as easy. Plug it, twist it. That's how they join. Rightio, I'm still out here. It's night time. I've had a heap of visitors today. We've had a beer or three and uh, been working on the boat. But um, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I'll tell you the story tomorrow. I'm bloody spent. I'm, um, I'm just putting some sticky stuff on to seal the back of these things properly. Uh, I've got three of them on. I'll give you a quick look. Hang on. They're looking all right. But we'll run through everything tomorrow anyway. I'm bloody knackered. I've sweated about 15 kilos of sweat out today. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, morning guys. Well, that was a big day yesterday. Took a lot longer to do those lights than what I thought. They're actually not that bad, really. Like, just don't get um, split tubing as small as what I did. It'll save you a little while. But anyway, what I'm doing now is um, I just got these little sticky uh, patches right um, and you can put the zip tie through and um, you can stick them up under the gunnels but the tape that they all come with are just crap so I just get the tape I pull the sticky stuff off and then I actually sick of flex it up underneath 12 hours or so it'll be stuck easy well enough to zip tie all the cables up there um, I went and got another bracket yesterday um, because it says rush to this 4x4 place after work to get a bracket and then she came back and there was only one in the packet. There's meant to be two, so I didn't get to get it done. But anyway, um, I just had Brad, the boat builder here. So th this boat's actually called Han Marine um, and he's gonna make them to order. So well, we haven't got any sponsorship deals or anything like that. I paid full price for this boat, I paid full price for everything. So there's no sponsorship deals. And to be honest, it's a bit of a relief with the boat not to have a sponsorship deal because I can give my honest opinions and stuff, but so far, really, really happy with this boat. And Brad's just been awesome to deal with. Um, he didn't get something quite right on the electrical system. When I turned the house isolator off, it wasn't actually turning the house off all the time. And it turned out that uh, the DC out uh, circuit breaker was ran incorrectly. So he drove an hour and a half out here, fixed everything up, like no questions asked. He's, he's just a good bloke. And um, it's been really refreshing to deal with someone who knows what they're talking about and actually gives a crap. So I can't speak highly enough of how he's been so far. Anyway, dob a sicker on all of this, try not to drop it on the floor, and that ain't going nowhere. Sticking them up under here, so I'll put another one here. Another one there, two, three, four, five. And that's what all this wire will just zip tie up to. But I had them on last night and they look pretty good.
Righto, we're up to um, the floodlight. I'm gonna mount him just here on the rocket launchers. I've drilled a small hole up behind here. I've ran the wire through and I've got it just here on the inside, but I cannot for the life of me grab it. And there's a little lip that just keeps getting caught on. So just gotta find a way to get it past that lip and then I'll put it through here over the speaker down this hatch. Fingers crossed, might not be like an all day ordeal like it was yesterday. <laughs> all right, so the wire is out, got it up here. This is gonna be the hard part because I've only tried to drill a small hole at that end, so I'm not left with a mess. Now I'm gonna pull all this out at once with the hook on it. So I'm gonna tape it in a few bits and just fingers crossed, uh, doesn't pull off. <laughs> so one man band here at the moment, so. This is gonna be the hard part. I didn't drill a hole very big. Hey, we done it! Right, so I've pulled the speaker cover off. By the way, um, Brad just put Fusion speakers in, wired directly to the GME um, stereo, and they absolutely pump. Like, they sound way better than what the other boat did, and it's on an amplifier, so I don't know if they're just better speakers or what, like the other boat was pretty good, Stezza, but this thing, I don't know if it's because it's in here or what, but yeah, it, it cranks and we like our music loud. He said to me at the start when I was looking at it, he said every single screw in this whole boat is done with uh, lanolin grease. Um, you know, you can use Tef Gel, as a few other things, but um, look at this, I even see like the stereo speaker, you can see the grease that was all around uh, all the screws. When I took the stereo, uh, the UHF, VHF, whatever I up before, they were all had lanolin grease around them. He really has taken like a lot of care with, when he was building this boat, a lot of thought into it. He's built a really, really good boat. Oh, sweating bad. This is turning out to be a little bit harder than I expected this part. So I've got a mate coming over just to feed it in while I try and pull it through, but it's really difficult. Oh, fast forward a couple of hours. Uh, we've got the VHF in, we've got the speaker back in, we've got the wires all ran. We've got the spare wire pulled, coiled up in here for later. We've got the floodlight wire out. And drilling through this stainless was a little bit of a feat in itself, but anyway, I got there. So there's the bracket for the floodlight. Now just got to whack it on. That is looking good. Wait for that to cool, slide the red one over, slide the big black one over, pull it back up into the hole, wire it up behind the thing. Oh, we're done! Well, I reckon I may have just pulled it off. Slide this up in here. Now I've got the heat shrink to protect it all as well. I reckon that looks all right. You got the wire, you got the red and black outer sheathings, then you got a, th uh, a thicker white outer sheathing, then I've got a uh, heat shrink over it so that's not gonna earth and rub through that at all plus i also rounded the hole on the outside here out so it's not a sharp edge so happy days all right school pick up back here wire it up and i'm done all right i had to cut a heap of zip ties off and that i've re-ran it up into the switch over here to the bus bar that should be about it really got it wired to the switch i can see light I can see bloody light, all right. So I've got the blue cover on there. You can take the blue cover off. You know, they say that's for marine, but if I take the blue cover off, it's a white light. You can see there, it's lighting up blue. And just like that, we got a floodlight. So all right, I've got it all tidied back up again now. The apprentice is home from work. <laughs> Just doing a vacuum up. Pretty much done. Morning guys, all right. So today is, um, today's the day. It's a pretty exciting day for me and says, um, in 41 years, I have never owned a brand new motor before, ever. And I know says hasn't. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that, to be honest with you. It's a, it's a good little achievement. Uh, I'd also like to point out to you guys that there's no sponsorship deals with this motor, with this Yamaha. Like we've paid full price um, for the Yamaha through Marine Care. We've traded our Suzuki in. 
um, and we've paid the difference on a brand new motor. So we haven't, like we're not sponsored by a motor company. Um, you know, we're not a huge channel and uh, like, geez, I'd love to be, but it's actually nice to have the freedom to be able to give honest opinion on the motor. And um, yeah, so we, we use uh, Marine Care for all our servicing, all our boat works and anything that needs to be done. We take it to them. We have been for years. They've always done a good job for us and that's what we'll continue to do. But we paid full price for the Yamaha through the boys and um, and that's all there is. So I don't want everyone thinking it's been handed to us at all because it hasn't. We paid full price for the boat. We paid full price for the motor and we'll pay full price for everything, all right? So anyway, I like that I can give you guys an honest opinion, no bullshit, like honest opinion of how the motor is, how it goes. I know it'll go good, like it's Yamaha far out. There's a Suzuki on it, which is totally fine. So I'm not saying nothing bad about any of the other brands. I've, I've owned them all. I've had Mercury, I've had, I've had Suzuki, I had, I've had Yamaha. I had twin DF140 Suzuki's on my 7.2 meter C Prowler years ago. And one of them ran Primo for the five years I owned her. And one of them was just running rough the whole time and we just couldn't get it right. So, you know, and that was the Suzuki's. I've never had a Yamaha even make a coughing splutter noise before. So that, that's just, that's why I go Yamaha, okay? Be interesting to see the fuel readings and stuff like that. Apparently Suzuki gets a bit better fuel economy, but I've got a bigger motor pushing the same weight as what the 250 was. So you'd think it'll work a little less hard, but who knows, you know, if I can get around that 1.4 to 1.5 mark with the Yami at say 20, 23, knots 24 knots i'll be a happy man and tell you what i'd love to get 40 knots full throttle anyway i'm nearly here let's have a look at this motor well the marine care boys were nice enough to let me come down and give them a hand installing the new motor and i was absolutely frothing although i think i got delegated the shit jobs like cutting all the zip ties off the wires Uh, Alright, this one's going to be the hard one, mate. Yep. There's two at the back as well. Two? Yep. Oh, God. <sighs> Having fun, mate? Oh, yeah, mate. Mm. It was out with the old and in with the new. This is the old Suzuki handle, and this is the yummy one. And this is a whole pile of spaghetti, ready for the new owner of the brand new Suzuki. There we go. Marky's done about, how many of these now, mate? Oh, a couple. A few. <laughs> so he's all over it. It's all plug and play, pretty much. Just plug, plug. That one's for the flux capacitor. This is the main harness wire that runs from the motor all the way up to the back of the helm. And that's basically all it needs. Mark started cutting out the hole for the Yami control because it was a different size to the Suzuki. All right, that was fun, but we got it in. It was a bit tight, eh, mate? Oh, yeah. Look at this. How good does that look? So Mark just made up a carbon fiber um, plate for it because the Suzuki hole was a little bit bigger than what this one is. That looks bloody awesome. Oh. Ooh. Oh, no, that's going to be flat out. What are you tipping? 41. 41. I said I'd be happy if we got 40. And it was time to start cutting into the boat. Now, whose idea was it to let this thing loose in my hands? And then this nifty little gadget called a finger sander. Never heard of it before, but damn sure I'm putting that on my Christmas list. This thing was unbelievable. Chewed the aluminium away like it was butter. It's time to unbolt the Suzuki. Have a go at the strength in the transom of the hull that Brad has built. There is a lot of aluminium in this boat. Here she is. Oh, our very first ever brand new motor. Here she goes. Suzuki's coming off. Right, eh? Hey, good. Yep. Right, 
right, I'm eight. I'm Violet. Oh, have a look at it. <laughs> ah, that's a motor. All right, the next morning and I rolled in about half an hour late. Mark had got a heap done. The wiring job that Brad's done was absolutely awesome. So I tried to stick with the theme and keep it all nice and neat as well. Mark tidied up behind the helm nicely and we were ready to kick the new motor in the guts. We're all done, mate. Yeah. Pretty much. Look at this. The boys cleaned out the tank yesterday yeah. for this motor. How good's that? Brand spanking water. Is it distilled water? Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're about to kick her in the guts. Good? Yep. <laughs> Have a bloody go at that. A brand new F300 Yamaha. We just had to dial in the diagnostics and we were on our way. Now, I'm going to pause it right here and give you guys 10 seconds to sit here and see if anyone can spot the shark in the wrap. Ready? Go. If you've seen the shark, drop it in the comments below. Holy crap. Alright, here's our first time tasting salt water. Alright, here we go. How quiet is it? Quiet. Than Very quiet. Yeah. Much you quieter. Want me to film it? She's in. Oh, the steering feels way lighter. I don't know if that's normal or not. Gauges. All right. So far. The yummy is a lot quieter, a lot quieter. I can't hear it at all. Let's just see how everything else goes, eh? <laughs> all right, here we go. This is our first time out in the water, so be a bit of trial and error. See how it is. Um, the Susie ran on half trim, so that's all we started at. This is Alan from Marine Care, the owner, so you know everything there is to know about Yamahas, mate. Uh, start trip. So, do you want to drive or you want me to drive? Your boat, mate. You sure? Drive. You can All right. it. Cool. That's right. All right, we're aiming for decent fuel economy, decent top speed. Um, so, it'll be interesting to compare the 250 Suzuki to the 300 Yami. Get out of this uh, guy's way here. There we go. So, we've got knots there now. And then, can we put that to kilometres per litre oh, yeah. for economy? We'll let Al do the driving for a bit, I reckon, I'll film. All right, so Al was just saying it's got troll function with it, which is awesome for trolling for Marlin and Spanish and all that. You can just have it in gear and click um, trim up, there. like that, and yeah, it'll... Troll activated, 50 RPM increments. How good is that? So every time you press it, it'll go up 50 RPM, so you can just control it really nicely without having to stuff with your throttle. Then to cancel it out, you just touch the throttle either back it off a tiny bit or whatever and it cancels it straight out almost like uh there you go that's good eh? that's really good
All right, so I wasn't really happy with the 15. Like, it, we got 40 knots top speed. The best fuel economy I could get was 1.4 kilometers per liter at 22 knots. And that, I, I just want to get a bit better than that if we can. But the main thing was it was cavitating a bit. You really had to have it trimmed in. Hopefully the motor doesn't have to go down one hole because it looked like it was on the borderline of it. But um, let's try this. So we've got a 17 inch prop on now. Fingers crossed. Uh, this might go a little bit better. But yeah, if you're cruising along at 20 knots and hit it, unless you had it trimmed right in, it'd cavitate. So we've also got a couple of four blade props, which we're gonna try out on this too. And yeah, you just got really got to get your propping right. So let's see how we go with uh, this 17, eh?
That's it. That's it. That's the prop. That is the prop. 1.6 kilometers per hour with a 300 horsepower Yamaha. That is the same economy, but one knot faster than the Suzuki was getting. It's six knots faster at top speed, and that prop holds a shitload better than what the Suzy one was. Uh, that had four props tried on it too, that Suzuki, so it was propped as best as it could. Mate, I am stoked. I felt a little bit disheartened before with that 15, but that 17 changed this boat. That's, that's, that's the difference in props, so if something doesn't feel right about your prop, you gotta, you gotta change, you gotta play with it, it'll change your whole boat. That, I'm so happy, I could not be happier. Alan's waiting back at the ramp here for me because that was a bit of a mission before. All right, let's get this boat on. I'm a happy man now, I'm a happy man. Well, with prop testing ready, it was time to do the pain in the ass part, and that was lift the patio to fit the new boat in. Lucky my good mates Gav and Mick were there to give me a hand. Or should I say, me and Mick, give Gav a hand. Hang on, spray painter. Did someone just spray painter? We want to talk to him. Hey, right behind you, mate. Is that still This fella is unbelievable at what he does. He come up with an idea to lift it. I just sat back and said, okay, I trust ya. <laughs> Do whatever it is to get the boat in. So he come up with this and it worked a bloody treat. They say small things amuse small minds. Well, me and Mickey had a bloody ball playing with this helmet in the sun. Yeah. You can look at that, mate. Really? Yeah. Safety Steve. Yep, look out Mickey. Just watch out for that beam on your head. We put some big galvanized legs underneath. We lifted the whole thing up 450 mil and we right. checked a few little bits in up towards the house. Surprisingly, it's probably stronger now than what it was before. Here we go, the moment of truth. Did I measure it properly? That's what is running through my mind the whole time in the car. Tell him when the toe ball's in. I'll t no, he's, no, he needs to just come in about 20 centimetres. And there you go. With 200 mil on top of the anchor light, I'll easily have enough room to fit a radar in if you want to add one later on. Rightio guys, the boat's in. Couple more little mods now. I'll tell you what, I'm pumping out the mods on this boat so when this wind pisses off, it's been blowing 25 to 30 knots. I'm looking at the trees right now and they're like sideways. We can finally send it and everything's done. Plus, seems like you guys love the mod sort of stuff that we do on the boat, so why not add a couple? But anyway, I've uh, been lucky enough to have this boat already have a uh, anchor winch on it, right? So it's a stress-free anchor, it's a free fall anchor, and it's also a manual down and up uh, anchor. So you can press it down, you can press it up, but then you can just press free fall and it'll just plummet to the ground. So all reviews um, are pretty good. Now, I had a sav winch on my boat two boats ago and it was really good. Um, never had a problem with it. So hopefully this one's just as good. But what I did have on my sav winch, right, was a chain sock and it goes over the anchor. All right. So this anchor running off your front bollard is super loud. It's like, like it's loud as. Um, it's also, I think, a little bit of etiquette to your fellow fishermen. If they're there first, you're rocking up, you anchor near them if you have something like this on your chain. So what it does is it makes it quieter hitting the bottom because your chain goes ching. You know, if you've ever been underwater and hit, hear your anchor chain hit the ground, it's very loud. I think it scares fish. Also, the sound of it coming off the front of your boat, 100% scares fish. So this, I would say, quietens your chain coming off the front of your boat by probably two thirds, it, like it works that well. So if you don't have a chain guard on your chain, you'll hear that noise. And then if you do have a chain guard on your chain, well, it'll be a lot quieter. But anyway, I'm gonna show you a little way that I just learned on YouTube to put it on easily because it can be an absolute pain in the ass. All right, first of all, we're gonna get the end and this big bundle 
we're just gonna throw it that way. <laughs> Going well so far. Now, from what I've seen, it's a bit of a two-man job, but I'm gonna try and suss this out myself. What you want is a rope that's longer than your, um, your chain guard and something long and stiff to uh, put down your chain guard. <laughs> and if I sound croaky as anything, that's because I have now been sick for about, oh geez, since just before New Year's and it's now like the 10th of March or something. It just, I've been smashed by two flus, COVID, and now this metanumovirus, and I've been really crook actually, and just trying to battle through it. But anyway, that's why I'm on the ass end of it now. But yeah, it's been taken its toll, I'll give you the hot tip. It's been a stressful, hard start to the year, but we're getting there. Anyway, um, you wanna feed this socket through, and the socket's working actually really well, all the way to the end, so I might fast forward that bit. All right, we got both ends now, put that through there and that through there. So the rope's pulled all through the middle. Now I've got to make a big, long, straight, tight line with this. Now what you want to do is, you want to get your chain guard and you want to put it over your chain like this onto the second link, all right? And then you want to tie your fishing line around this. Now it's a little bit hard to do while I'm holding it up for the camera, but I'll show you after. You want to tie it around that second link and really tightly. All right, so tie it around that second link like that. So it's nice and tight. Snip off these two edges. All right, this is where it might get a little bit difficult for me, being by myself. You've then got to, you can see if you pull this stuff, it goes skinny, but if you push it, it stretches like that. Okay, so you need to push it on. So you need to push it over the chain. This actually proved to be a little bit of a pain in the ass by yourself, so I had to come up with a different idea. Rightio, let's try that again. You really do need two people or a Toyota Land Cruiser and tie the chain and rope off to it. Anyway, hopefully this is tied off to the boat back there. And, oh. That is much easier. That was way easier. That took me about one minute. <laughs> and all I did was just had the rope tied to the cruiser, take that off, undo it here, and that just leaves a nice little neat bit folded back under. Put my anchor on here. Bob's your uncle's sister's daughter's cousin. All right, guys, here we go. That's it, the very end. That's, so that's where the anchor's gonna go onto. I've got it, two zip ties, I've got this bit folded back under itself in about that far, so it's nice and neat and it won't fray. The two zippies, so I'll see how they go. And um, <laughs> that's so much better, eh? I'm gonna winch it up. You'll see the difference in, well, I should have probably winched it without the chain and showed you, but I'll definitely notice the difference anyway. I'm gonna open this gate, I'm gonna winch it up, tie the anchor on, the Manson Supreme anchor, and um, that's that job done. Then, all righty, winch him up. Oh, look at this. So before it would go, and I swear, I promise you, it was really noisy. I'm gonna show you the difference. So that's the rope, okay? So that's my Dyneema. And then when it turns to black, that's the chain. See if you can notice the difference in the noise. That is way quieter. I would say, like that's unbelievable actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, 100%, if you got an anchor, $52. I got that from Road Tech Marine, 52 bucks, eight meters. Um, yeah, it's a no brainer. So definitely one of my good tips <laughs> is, uh, and I don't give many, is make sure you put that stuff on. Oh, damn it. I had to winch it up a bit more. All right. So what I did is I, Put that little bit of uh, white tape there, if you can see it a meter from the anchor, so I know when I'm pretty close. So it should come up about now. Yep. Flip this around the right way. Oh, how good's that, mate? Awesome. All right. I'm gonna miss my Minkota, I know that, but.
but this is a very good uh, consolation prize, that's for sure. Um, these, these electric anchors are worth their weight in gold, but a min coder, you've got no noise, you can sit straight on top of your mark, bang, spot lock, like they really are a game changer for fishing, but we'll plot along with this for a while. Righto, stickers. Um, whacking stickers on is a bit of an art in itself, isn't it, really? But um, I'm putting all the sponsors' stickers on the insides and outside of the cabin because with these fellas, out of line would not exist. So there you go, and what I do is I uh, tape it through the middle, I stick it up, I make sure it's all nice and uniform, I peel half the sticker back, I tear off the inside, spray it with just water both sides, and I use a felt squeegee like this, and I squeegee all the air out, then I'll pull that whole other section back and I'll peel this off and squeegee that one out, comes up mint. Yeah, so I literally just, there, that one's all squeegeed out, and then I'll fold this back. I've become pretty good at putting uh, stickers on, and you can see the end of the white backing there. Uh, I'll then pull that off. It's normal water, both surfaces. Go up and down. All right, so at least if you make a mistake, you can pull it off and you can put it back on again. Happy days. All right, next mod. Just had to go quickly to school pickup. But anyway, as you can see here, got a heap of dots on the side, right? So what my plan is, is I'm going to have one rod holder 45 off the back for float line and stuff like that. And I have a rod holder this way off the back pointing out to the port side. And that's going to be for trolling for Spanish. I'm going to have the same on the other side um, so I can run a bit of a spread and also two float lines out the back and or I can run, you know, a spread with one out the back in the middle. And I think that just works really nicely, you know, with a couple of rod holders on the side pointing out on the 45. This one here pointing out the back other two it'll um covers all sorts of fishing and trolling so i've seen it done before on other boats and i wanted to do it on this one so what i did is i looked everywhere for some decent rod holders they're like 45 dollars each or something like that all stainless but they're just weld on one so what i did is i got me mate richie at radius fabrication to cut up uh, some of these tabs and then another mate kevin he um welded the the tabs on so i think they're just looking a lot nicer the ones that I seen, they were sitting like this far off. It would just look silly. So anyway, I got those. Or they had like a, a, a rubber, you know, little clamp that goes around and it just, I didn't like it. So I'll show you what I'm planning to keep the stainless um, away from the aluminium anyway. So this first hole that I've done here, I just have to use a little tap and die kit, an M6 tap and die kit, because if you come around on the inside, you can see there's some box section there and I can't get a bolt on that. So. I'm going to put that through. I'm going to teff gel it. I might even be real fussy and um, heat shrink the bolt and then um, uh, teff gel it because that's you can do that. I just so two dissimilar metals when you get stainless against alley, it will end up reacting. This boat has taken every precaution with whip blasting and then primer, then a high build, then two coats, a two pack. So there's a lot on it but still it'll end up doing it. So what I'm gonna do is just take every precaution. I'll heat shrink these shoot screws that go in and I'll also um, I'll also tap gel it and hopefully I shouldn't have a drama. With these top ones where I can just drill straight through, what I'll do with them is I've got nylon washer. So I'm keeping the stainless away. The only part that will touch the alley is the thread and I'll tap gel the crap out of that. Hopefully should be good. I'll tell you in six months to a year, but. All right, dissimilar metal precaution number two is from uh, Anchor Palabar, plastic welded products. They've got this little bit of thin one mil, almost like nylon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've got that, I'm cutting them out to size and I'm putting it between the stainless and the alley, wherever I can. I'm actually gonna do it around the whole boat. Brad's gone to a lot of trouble to weld stainless bow rail, rod holders, handles, everything. It looks awesome. It will last a lifetime, but I just want to separate the two by putting um, this little bit of like uh, a divider between the stainless and the alley, even though I'll show you later on what he's actually gone to the trouble of doing to stop that. But still, still gonna do it. Tap gel. That's what you wanna use. I'm putting a stainless bolt through aluminium. Plus, I've made up me little tabs here. They're gonna go between the alley and the stainless. And that's about every precaution I can take there. So let's whack it on. The old tap gel. On the um, 
end of the bolts on the inside, what I'm doing is I'm putting a nylon washer, then a stainless washer, then I'm gonna put a nylock on it, and I'm gonna thread seal it. So that's about every precaution I can take for getting um, the metals not touching each other. And hopefully, two, three, four years down the track, it's still like this. All right, it's taken a while, but it's coming together. I'll show you it at the end. There's a bit of blood there on the side. There's the, there's the Slayer. Looking good. Hey guys, it's the next morning. Um, once again, I didn't finish till dark out here last night. Uh, everything to do with the boat takes way longer than what you think, eh? But I'm stoked with the outcome. I reckon it's a good idea. I'll give you a look, tell me what you reckon. So, what this allows me to do, like I said, is just have a floater out the back, or two. So I've got one out the back, and I've got one here. So I have one off the back, one off the quarter. And then I've got another two over here. So uh, that's another floater. And I can have another one off here. Because you want your rods pointing a little bit apart. Then what it allows me to do also is off the back, I've got those two on a sort of maybe like a 20 degree slope upways, port and starboard. And that's going to be for trolling for, um, you know, Wahoo, Spanish, all that sort of stuff. So, and that's going to point my rods, you know, almost four meters apart. So got a nice little spreader off the back there. Handy as. And then it's just nice and quick. Straight out into your side pocket. We're out of here. Back in there. And they clear each other nicely. So it's good. And then I've got room for my first light products when they turn up here and over here. I reckon it looks all right. I was like, oh, is it going to look too much or what? But it actually looks mint. And it's, it's going to be really functional. Like even when you're fishing for snapper on the anchor and all that, you can have these two out with floating baits back. You can have those ones out the back. You can fish four rods separate. You're not going to get knots and tangles and all that. You're not going to get tangles and stuff like that. So that's a good little idea, I reckon. What I have done is done every precaution to split the stainless from the aluminium with nylon washers, Tef gel, like, um, yeah, everything. So even one mil nylon gaskets that I made up, I cut them behind every single bit. Stainless is awesome. You just want to keep it apart from your um, aluminium, that's all. Well, guys, I don't really know how many more mods I need to do to this boat. One thing is I've got my good mate Clint from Goodline Trimming. He's going to come over the Savo and measure up in there for trimming it. And then I've got some um, products coming from Camp Boss, which are gonna just make it so much easier to sort, store stuff. So basically the only other mods I wanna put on this boat is an autopilot. I've wanted an autopilot my whole life. I've never had one before. At the moment, funds are dry. So until I can save up for that, autopilot on this boat, because we're gonna do a lot of kilometers and to just not have to sit there and hang onto the wheel would just be amazing. And I would actually like to put a radar on, but that will be last because that can help you through the bar. It can help you get out of the rain. Um, like literally me and a mate years ago, we were traveling along, he called me up. Oh, if only if we head four kilometers north, we're out of the rain. You could see it on the radar. We headed four kilometers north, boom, out of the rain. So it was pretty cool. So they're super handy. So radar and, um, and autopilot. I think that's basically the last two things I want to do, except, except for um, some ladders off the transom and first light, I've got a wicked little idea there because we love towing each other around, looking at all the reef and all that up north and, and see the trout come out. So we've got a good little idea for that, but um, that's a little bit away yet. So yeah, anyway, I think it's ready to go. I think it's ready to fish. I know I'm ready to fish. Actually, one more thing. I've got me mate Lucas from um, Boat Flooring Australia. He's coming around. We're gonna put some, um, uh, some cool stuff in the gunnels here because we can chuck our spear guns in there. I don't want it to all just get scratched up, you know? And look what Sarah's cat did. <laughs> and over here. You ever heard that Green Spoon song, Dead Cat, three times? Dead cat, three times. <sighs> That's good. <laughs> he's, he's pushing me. <coughs> All right, so there's some cool mods there. And I'll tell you what, what's got to be my favorite obviously is the motor all right we went from the susie to the yammy i explained why like it's got that much balls like says got in it then and we we're hooking down here and she's like oh my god it's like so touchy it just wants to go the fuel economy is amazing um the reliability is you know nothing compares to yamaha when it comes to re reliability it's just it's just how it is um so that's why we went with the yamaha outboard and thank you to marine care for fitting it all out setting it all up you guys did an awesome job now, another thing I love about this boat, 
is the fuel, how much fuel it holds. It holds 550 litres of fuel for a 6.8 metre boat. That is incredible. So with a 1.6 kilometre per litre average, now I know I won't get that on reef trips, but I'll easily get 1.2 to 1.3 because that big motor with that big prop likes the weight, okay? So the weight won't change it that much. So I'm, I'm banking on 1.3 on reef trips, which is gonna put me over 700 kilometres for one full tank of fuel which is ridiculous. I could do a Swain's trip out of this boat. Um, so that's one thing I just fell in love. I was like, five, 550 litres, sign me up. Another thing, we've got 40 litres of fresh water under the floor as well. So over here, you can see this is the fresh water here. And over this side, we've got the salt water and they're plumbed in. And I like that they're plumbed in and not clipped because they're not gonna leak. They're always a pain in the ass with leaking. So. You want the salt, it's right there. You want the fresh, it's right there. Bait board. Brad loved doing this bait board, he said, didn't he, <laughs> says. So I love the bait board. It's designed for a cooker to go in, except um, it's probably a little bit thin for the cooker to go in. So we've come up with a good idea up the front. I'll show you soon. But over here, we got all our hooks and everything is in there. All right, nice and accessible. Down the bottom, we got some sinkers. Um, still waiting for our first light products to pop up, which we'll put on the sides here. But we've got, you know, leader sinkers and some um, and some pliers and stuff like that there. Now this bait board I had here, and what we did is we put some double-sided, as you've seen earlier, um, some Velcro. So that'll just pull off. We can hose out underneath it because, like, our other one just started stinking. So that was another little and thing black, we did. which is cool. And yeah. it's black. We'll see how it goes. It might end up curving. We might end up having to go white. Who knows? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even mention that this boat is brand spanking, did I? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's brand new, all right? So that motor has 20 minutes on it, probably. Um, the Suzuki had about 14 hours. So that, that 14 hours and 20 minutes is all that's on this boat. We've never owned a brand new boat between us, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our very first brand new boat. We're pretty proud. We work super hard and um, look, we've, you know, none of it's sponsorship deals or anything. We've paid full price for absolutely everything. So anyway, this is another thing I love. And Brad threw this in with the boat sail, which was pretty cool. <laughs> That's an 80 litre fridge under there, fridge freezer. You know, we're gonna fit all our food in there, no problems at all, and beer. Do we still drink beer? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Not that much, but eh? Um, and you can see through there, it's all vented. So it's all vented. There's hatches on the left there, so you can get under that way if you need to for everything. Um, it's all channeled and any water runs through here and out the back of the transom. So this, this, I love this, I love this idea. Okay, so we've got the 40 litres of water, 550 litres of fuel, and an 80 litre fridge right there. Plastec drawers, these things, I could not believe how much they were. Do you know how much for these four drawers? Uh, thousands, wasn't it? $4,000 yeah. <laughs> for these four drawers. That is out of control, but he didn't spare any expense, and I'm glad he didn't. So, you can see there, we're just keeping our ropes in this one. Life jackets and everything are under there. We've got our leader. That's a spare. And that's just still a bit of crap sitting in there. This one over here, we've just got um, some scuppers and stuff like that. Here, we've got some microfiber cloths. And we've got the rest of our tackle there, some fenders, and our parachute sits over on that side. So we'll fit absolutely everything in there. Might echo a little bit in here. My favourite part. Yeah, the cabin. Um, this is where it says it's going to do heaps of sleeping while I keep fishing. Uh, this still has to get fitted out. So our mate Clint and Kirsten at Goodline Trimming, um, they're going to, this is all going to be a nice carpet, nice soft um, dark grey roof. And then on this side here, I've got um, from Camp Boss, so I've got an organiser. Alrighty, and come in here, says. So this is all getting upholstered and that, and then the organizer is going to go on the back of there. That's going to fit like that fits heaps in it. It's going to fit our food, oils, all that sort of stuff. And then I'll show you under here. There's a massive big storage area down here. I love it. You can fit heaps. So more camp boss gear. So we've got all our cooking gear in here. How good is this, says? 
heavy duty, so yeah. won't be poking is... any holes in the side of those. No, we've got a divider. <laughs> it's all insulated. It's all thick. We What was the other one we had? Oztrail. Yeah. And it was just it was just thin just and canvas, crap. Wasn't it? Yeah, so this is awesome. Um, got dividers. You can move that divider everywhere. So we've got two of those. So that's all our plates and cups and everything. This is some of our cooking utensils, and it's good. You've got them divided up there. So we've got oil, our jet, jet boil, gas canisters, coffee, everything's in there. We've got our Camp Boss cooker. Our other one, I'll put a bit of footage here. We used to have to sit there and hold it from sliding off everywhere because it was an absolute pain in the butt. Nothing worse than at the end of the day of a reef trip and you're having to hold the fry pan on. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, the things you don't see on camera. Yeah. So this one straight up on there oh. and it's got a pan and it won't move around so the pan weird. pulls off all right then it sits in there it's all recessed so if it's rough you can still do it then you got your lid so you can cook stews bloody curries steaks fish everything and you keep can, fishing at the same time and keep fishing so that's like that's just so much easier you know so we were going to have like a built-in cooker and all that but well, that's just so easy. And then at the end, you've got your fresh water there. And you wash it out, flip it back over the lid. In she goes back in its case and, and it's way up the front. I can't wait to use that. Neither can I. Because we, we couldn't cook much. Like, what were we cooking? We were cooking like fish on like the- a fish, but it was just like you had to sit there and hold the fry pan because it would slide yeah, off. I know. <laughs> remember, when it, remember when the fat spat at me? Oh. Oh, ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that like guys, that's been, I think that's awesome. And you didn't know this says, but it's designed so when the lid comes down, it pushes on the lid there inside. Yeah. Oh, and, no and it doesn't noise. rattle. Yeah. So it's good. Um, we've got our safety gear up there in the red. And then we've got the rest of our lures and all that sort of stuff from the Hot Tackle Boys. They've loaded us up. That's full of stuff. EPUB, electronics, everything's behind there. So look, ready? There, easy as packed away. Righto, come up into the cockpit. Rightio, another little thing I did was um, put quad lock on the side here. And then Brad's put like a, a what are these called again? USB um, power on the side. So it's all nice, it's right there. And my phone locks into there and it's actually really yeah. cool. So good. Yeah, so I've got music and everything. It's just all it's all there. I'm not sitting my phone up around every I actually wouldn't mind getting another one for the passenger on that side, but they're not cheap. I think it's like 160 bucks for that. Alright. This has a stress-free anchor and I showed you going through all that, so I won't go through it, but that is awesome. How much quieter is it? Gone are the days of the Sezi 5000. Yeah, the Sezi 5000, the Mickey 3000, they're gone. <laughs> What's, how much quieter was it? Oh, so good. She's like, oh, that is so much quieter. I told you guys. The first few times without the sock and oh yeah. my God. <laughs> All right, so it's just got a GME Steza um, with fusion speakers and it cranks. It's not even amplified or anything and like, it just absolutely pumps. Um, we've got zip wakes, 450 mil zip wakes and they have been awesome. I've still got to get used to them. I'm just setting them to auto and away you go, but I've got to play around with them a bit more, but they've been really good. Um, it's got your auto bilge and everything up the front here. So I can check my bilge is working. I can check, you know, everything. So from right there. So instead of having to pull your auto switch thing off, you can just push auto and make sure that your bilge pump is set to auto and working when you're sleeping. Yummy gauge, so this is a CL5. So they're all touch screen now. So literally like no buttons, it's all touch screen. It gives us all our fuel figures and all that sort of stuff there. So, and then this, Simrad. It's got a Simrad in it. I've never owned a Simrad before. I've had Fruno, I've had Lowrance, I've had Humminbird, we've had Garmin. We haven't had Simrad. So this is the first Simrad. This was in the boat, Brad put it in. So far, it's good. It's the Evo NSS 3S, which is a six core processor. It's faster than all the other Simrads. Yeah, um, it's really easy to transfer the marks in. Straight it was from easy. To Simrad. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So we haven't got our 295 anymore. So oh, I don't know, yeah. our Furuno 295 with the 200B 8B transducer, I've said that a million times, we haven't got it anymore. I'm gonna see how it goes without it for a while. 
we don't have any electronic sponsors or anything like that. Like it's, it's, we never have, we just use what we like to use. I haven't been offshore in this boat yet, um, in the deeper water and stuff. Um, so I'll report back to you on the Simrad, but so far the usability and everything has been awesome. Um, I've even managed how to flick, you know, these pages just flick by themselves and give me every little bit of information I need right there every five seconds. It's very, very quick. Like, I mean, if I, you know, zoom out, scroll wherever, it's like I can't even keep up with it, you know. Clear cursor, zoom in, zoom out. Like, it's, it's really, really quick. So that's one thing I like so far. The transducer on this is, uh, it's got two transducers. That's three. It's got two transducers. I got a TM275 low high wide. So I think they're about just under two and a half thousand dollars for the transducer. Brad already had that on it, and from what I've read up, it's a pretty good good choice. So I can do your high frequency shallow stuff with heaps of detail, and I can go out deep in four or five hundred meters with the low frequency, and they go pretty good out there. So I'm I'm hanging for the weather to go good, to come good. Mm -hmm and I'm gonna head out and I'm gonna do some deep stuff and use the electric reels and stuff like that. So I'm absolutely hanging. And then it's got the generic three-in-one transducer with side scan and stuff like that. So I haven't even tried that one yet. Like I said, we've just been smashing out everything on the boat. So when the weather comes good, we're gone. All right, another thing that Brad did that I think is awesome is the exposed look here, up here with all the beams or rafters like, <laughs> it just looks awesome, don't you reckon? Yeah, he loved doing it. Yeah, didn't like doing it. But I reckon if you end up getting a boat through Brad, tell him that you want the exposed beams. Cause they, they look awesome. It just, it, I don't know, just sets it off. It was a lot of work. Like a lot of work goes in. If you're a boat builder or a painter or whatever, you know how much work goes into just doing such a good job along the rafters of the roof here. So well done, mate. Um, I also like, he's got stainless, 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 full stainless bow rail like everything stainless and he's taken every precaution to separate the two dissimilar metals because I know that's what you guys are going to say to me. Um, so down here, you can see on top of the boat, you can see this here, he's had special pucks machined, right, that sit on top of the alley and they're tap and dyed into that and then the stainless is bolted down on top of that. This whole boat has had a process called whip blasting, which I didn't know what it was, but he explained it to me and it's where you sandblast the hull and you spray the primer on soon after and the aluminium actually soaks in the primer instead of the primer sitting on top of the aluminium. After that, it's had a high build primer and then two coats of two pack paint. And then everything he said was lanolin greased, which I know now it is because I even pulled the speaker screws out. You would have seen that and they had lanolin grease on them. So um, yeah, but what I'm gonna do is get that white stuff that I put with the rod holders that you've seen, the little gasket stuff. And I'm just gonna pull all this stuff off put it between it just so I don't ever have to do it again. Um, so the dead rise of this boat is a 20 degree constant dead rise. And with the big chines all the way along the side, I find that every boat that I've been in with a 20 degree constant and big chines has that happy medium of getting through the chop really well, but still not being broachy in a following sea or anything like that. So this boat is the same. Um, I've had it in crappy sea, probably chop about this big in the bar and in a following sea and it didn't broach, it ran true, it ran nicely, it ran quietly. Um, it's, it's so far, I, I love it. But look, time will tell. We haven't had it out in super rough, crappy conditions. What's our forte? Uh, well, but it will, <laughs> it, it's going, that's, that's for sure. And um, look, like like I said, we're not sponsored or anything like that. We'll be honest about the whole thing. If this ends up being a bucket, well, then you'll know about it, but there's no way it's gonna. I'm pretty good with telling if boats are good and I'm pretty bloody stoked with this thing. Um, Says hasn't been out in, a, in any choppy. Oh no, we went to Peel and it was pretty choppy, eh, yeah, with the well, kids and yeah. it just, you can feel if a boat's gonna play up. It just ran so nicely. All right, the flooring. Brad did this, it was all in here, sea deck. Um, says didn't like the skull at the start, did ya? No. Is it growing <laughs> on you yet or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's staying for now. Um, so, look, it's got the measurements up the side. It's got it all around the front. It's got it up on the front deck. I've got Lucas from Boat Flooring Australia making me up some stuff for in the gunnels because we'll chuck our spear guns and stuff in there. I don't want it all to get scratched. Um, so that's gonna go on there. I'm gonna put some stuff up on the roof for the kids so they can jump off the roof and not slip. And that's it. The only other mods we're really gonna do to this boat, like I said, I'm 
I'm dying for a um, autopilot. We'll see how it goes, but we're thinking about some suspension seats. But there's a bit of modification that has to be done to the seat box, isn't that? If we want to do that, otherwise it's going to make it too high. And then also we're going to, uh, me and Mark, a friend of mine, the guy that fit the motor actually, we're going to make an esky and I'm going to film a whole episode. You guys are going to love that. It's going to be a sick esky. It's going to be, I won't even tell you, it's just, it's going to be a really cool esky for fishing and leisure and everything. It's a two part esky and it'll come apart and uh, it's going to be perfect to hear about 400 litres, fully 50 mil um, uh, insulated. So it'll hold ice for days. So we're going to do that over the next couple of weeks. And then um, apart from that, mate, that's about it for mods. Like the boat is fully done then, but autopilot, I've, I'm dying for an autopilot. I'd be curious to know what anyone would add to it. Yeah, what actually. I think it's missing? Very good idea. Guys, if you can come up with something, if you think we're missing something, anything, like leave comments. Please leave comments. It's one thing I love about YouTube is I get so many ideas off you guys, as many as you guys get off me. So anything you'd add, or, or, or anything you think we've done wrong, leave, leave a comment and we'll get back to you. So, yeah. Um, the wrap, I love the wrap. I think probably one of the best wraps I've seen, actually. <laughs> I love the wrap, like, I don't know. It's, it's got the fish scales, they're blue. It's just, I would have never even thought of that. And I think it was Aragon Skins done it, Brad said. They've just nailed it, looks, looks awesome. Um, I don't know if you found the hidden shark, but if you did comment, yep, found the shark, leave us a comment there. But um, honestly, guys, there's not really too much more to say. This is a new boat. Bring on the uh, reef trip. Can't wait. You better oh. not go without me. Oh, man. <laughs> we are frothing to go to the reef now. Like, we don't, we won't know ourselves. We've been, we, the, the old boat was amazing, but for a two day reef trip, it did get hard work. Yeah. You know, and we did it for years. So, you know, we did it like it was awesome. I could keep doing it, but it's just going to be a bit easier to do that stuff in this. And that's what we love doing. So, a lot more reef trips, a lot more overnighters, a lot more cruisy style fishing, cooking, like um, rather than the pressure of trying to smash fish every single time. I'm looking forward to it actually, and I uh, hope you guys are too. Right guys, so that's it. 6.8 meter MMD hardtop built by Harm Marine. I wanna say a massive thank you to Brad, mate. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> you've done an awesome job. Yeah. And um, you're gonna see some cool adventures. I hope you guys are all looking forward to the trips that we're going to do. Yeah, I know. Are you where, looking forward to it? Where should the first one be, do you think? Where do we go? What's our first trip? Let us know and we'll go there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you next week. I don't know what it is yet, yeah. but I'd say it'll be in this thing somewhere. Yeah. And a big shout out to uh, Gus and Harley as well, which I missed about two episodes ago. Oh, Sorry, big, Chant. Big, big, big shout out. Every Gus, time we go to school, we get kids going, yeah. give us a shout out, Gus, Gus and Harley. Gus was actually hoping the next episode was me catching a big bluey. So sorry to disappoint you, mate. <laughs> there's your shout out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say a massive thank you also to all our sponsors. You guys are awesome. Patreons. And our Patreons, yeah. you guys are unbelievable. And everyone else that watches our show. Um, look, you've Couldn't been here for three either. years now. And, um, you know, you've been part of, this is the third boat. All right, so yeah. thanks heaps, guys. We'll see you next week. I want to say a massive thank you to our legendary Patreons. You guys are bloody awesome. We appreciate the support more than you know. I'd like to welcome our newest Patreon member, Grant. Grant, thanks heaps, mate. We appreciate the support, you bloody legend. If you'd like to become a Patreon, head over to patreon.com forward slash Adventures. And we'd like to say a massive thank you to our sponsors. Your support and friendship means the absolute world to us. Cheers, guys.